Imagine you're Sisyphus. You've been punished by the gods. But this time, you're not forced to roll a gigantic boulder up a hill only for it to roll back down every time you get near the top again, and again, and again, for eternity. Imagine instead, you've been punished to copy the same artwork again, and again, and again, for eternity. Which painting, which masterpiece would you choose? Our story today is about copying, and what better thing to copy than the most famous painting in the world. The Mona Lisa is the most iconic painting on earth. It's a wild success, and success attracts copycats like honey attracts black bears. Our story today is about copying the Mona Lisa. You might think that our Mona Lisa story would start in Paris, at the Louvre Museum where the Mona Lisa has been residing for centuries, where visitors marvel at it where other prestigious paintings surround it like luxury bodyguards, where crowds stand in queue for hours to get 10 seconds of Instagram fame with her. No, our Mona Lisa story starts in China, in the Chinese southern province of Guangdong, near the megacity of Shenzhen. There's a small village called Dauphin, the Dauphin oil painting village. Their speciality, copying. They churn out replicas of famous masterpieces in formidable quantities, they do a lot of Van Goghs and many other pieces. And of course, Mona Lisa. A replica of the Mona Lisa would sell for a few thousand dollars in the United States, but only a few hundred here. If the Mona Lisa got to Dauphin, it's because it's really everywhere, from mugs to books to movies. A quick Google search for Mona Lisa replica returns 18 million results. 18 millions. That's a lot of copies. But are they any good? Well, at least some of them are tasty. I like making things out of weird stuff. Weird maybe is a little harsh. Surprising maybe. Yeah, unusual. <laughs> tasty materials. That's true. Her materials are actually jelly beans. Now, let's get back a few centuries ago. Let's go to Leonardo da Vinci's studio. What if the first Mona Lisa copies were actually created there by the master himself? It was common practice for Leonardo, as well as other great artists of the Renaissance, to make multiple versions of their paintings. Like for example, these two versions of da Vinci's Virgin of the Rocks, or these two versions of the Madonna of the Yarnwinder that he started painting in 1499. There are even more versions of the Madonna of the Yarnwinder. It'd have been pretty cool to find Mona Lisa copies by Leonardo da Vinci himself, though none has been found so far, at least none that can be accepted as authentic. But as the biblical saying goes, you'll know a tree by its fruits. The fruits of the da Vinci tree were his numerous disciples who carried on his legacy and created many copies of his work. These disciples are called the Lenardeschi. That's kind of a badass name, right? Here are some of the Mona Lisa copies produced by the Lenardeschi. Now let's move back to France. In the Condé Museum at the Chantilly Castle, there's an enigmatic piece of artwork that's much talked about. La Jocan Nu, or Mona Vanna, is a nude portrait of a young woman seated in a three-quarter position with crossed hands. Her posture is reminiscent of the Mona Lisa. Some believe it to be from Leonardo da Vinci himself, but the matter is still debated. What's sure is that this piece was so popular that it sparkled multiple copies and reinterpretations. For example, we have the Mona Vanna by Italian artist, and da Vinci's pupil Andrea Salai, and this other Mona Vanna by Flemish painter Juice van Cleve. Countless similar artworks have since followed. Some of the Mona Lisa's copies created scandals and uproars as their owners claimed they were actually the original Mona Lisa, like the Isleworth Mona Lisa. Since the 1910s, lots of smart experts and collectors who got their hands on the painting have claimed it to be a Leonardo da Vinci original, like an early draft of the Mona Lisa. In 1914, art critic Paul George Conady considered that the painting was, quote, very largely worked up by the master himself, and that it had features that were, quote, far more pleasing and beautiful than in the Louvre version. Contemporary art historian Martin Kemp, on his part, totally disagreed and was like, no way, Leonardo didn't paint any of it. According to him, it's just one of those many copies of the Mona Lisa made by Leonardo's crew of helpers and students. A 
Another disputed version of the Mona Lisa is the Hecking's Mona Lisa. So back in the 1960s, this guy named Raymond Hecking claimed he had the real thing, the original Mona Lisa. He was like, nah, the one in the Louvre is a fake. Here's the real one that I bought for three British pounds. He even had this whole exhibition showing off his version, saying it's the real Mona Lisa. But you know what? Most experts were like, nope, it's just a copy. So the whole thing turned into this big debate. And it's still a hot topic among art enthusiasts. Crazy, right? If some of the copies were faithful reinterpretations, and others were close to counterfeiting attempts, others were parodies and poked fun at Mona Lisa. Honestly, they were some of the most interesting of the bunch, like the one by 19th century French caricaturist Arthur Sapek, the Mona Lisa smoking a pipe. Another one, even more daring, was done by another French artist in the early 20th century. So back in 1919, the quite known artist Marcel Duchamp decided to have some fun and created an hilarious parody of the Mona Lisa. He took a postcard of the Mona Lisa, you know, that serious lady with the enigmatic smile, and then he added a little mustache and a goatee to her face. But wait, that's not all. He also wrote the letters L-H-O-O-Q at the bottom, which when you say it in French, sounds like hell ha show o q meaning her ass is on fire. That caused quite a stir and became an iconic piece of the Dada art movement. It's still making people smile to this day. Inspired by Marcel Duchamp's version, Spanish star painter Salvador Dali created his own self-portrait as Mona Lisa. English artist Alex Corinna painted Mona Lennon with a John Lennon face, a guitar, and the city of Liverpool in the background. We have Mona Lisa Bazooka by pseudonymous England-based street artist Banksy. And we also got the colored Mona Lisa by American icon Andy Warhol. And from then, well, it kind of gets crazier and crazier. Okay, we've shown Andy Warhol's version. Now meet his neo-expressionist friend, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Basquiat was also an American artist and rose to success during the 1980s with an art that was full of rebellion and darkness. His version of Da Vinci's masterwork is called Crown Hotel, Mona Lisa Black Background. Here, Basquiat uses his signature expressive and abstract style to reimagine the iconic Mona Lisa. He places her in a dynamic and vibrant urban setting. The background is painted black, intensifying the focus on the central figure. Basquiat's use of bold colors, powerful brush strokes, and enigmatic symbols adds depth to the piece, inviting viewers to explore the layers of meaning within. In a totally different crazy style, there's Fernando Botero, a renowned Colombian artist known for his distinctive balloonist touch of Boterismo. His subjects are painted with these exaggerated, big, chubby, plump, round figures. So, what could his Mona Lisa look like? Well, quite strange. And to be honest, quite scary. Now what could be more disturbing than a greenish, alien-like, huge-headed Mona Lisa age 12? Maybe a Mona Lisa who's simply gone. Like in these famous paintings reinterpreted by American artist Sophie Matisse in her Missing Person series. Like this. Thanks for hanging out with us till the end. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell, so you won't miss any of our future videos. We really appreciate your support.